In Lesson 6-4, we will cover the properties of rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. Take a minute to read the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. The sides and angles of the parallelograms below have extra special properties. The diagonals of these parallelograms also have additional properties. A rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. A rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. A square is a parallelogram with both four congruent sides and four right angles. So the square is kind of the baby of the rectangle and the rhombus. In the Venn diagram, we can see that the square has all the properties of the rhombus and all the properties of the rectangle. In example one, we will classify special parallelograms. Is parallelogram ABCD a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square? Explain. Since parallelograms have opposite angles that are congruent, we know that the measure of angle B and the measure of angle D will equal 90. We also know that consecutive angles are supplementary, so the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C equals 180. Let's substitute 90 in for the measure of angle B and solve for the measure of angle C. So we know that the measure of angle C is also 90. Since opposite angles are congruent and the measure of angle C is 90, the measure of angle A is also 90. Since all four angles have a measure of 90 degrees, we know that all four of these angles are right angles, so parallelogram ABCD is a rectangle. Pause the video and do you trend number one. We know that parallelograms have opposite sides that are congruent. Since side EF is opposite side HG, we know they are congruent. We can see in the diagram that segment EH is congruent to segment EF. And since opposite sides of parallelograms are congruent, segment FG will also be congruent to segment EH. Since all four sides of the parallelogram are congruent, our parallelogram is a rhombus. The diagonals of rhombuses have special properties. If a parallelogram is a rhombus, then the diagonals are perpendicular. Notice that segment AC is perpendicular to segment BD. Also, if a parallelogram is a rhombus, then each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. So notice that segment AC makes angle 1 and angle 2 that are congruent to angle 5 and angle 6. Segment BD bisects the angles so that angle 3 and angle 4 are congruent to angle 7 and angle 8. In example 2, we will find angle measures. What are the measures of the numbered angles in rhombus A, B, C, D? Let's start with the fact that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So here, segment BD will be perpendicular to segment AC, so angle 1 and all of these angles will be 90 degrees. Since the measure of angle ABD is 58 degrees, and we know that alternate interior angles are congruent when we have parallel lines, the measure of angle 2 is also 58 degrees. To find the measure of angle 3, let's use the fact that the diagonals of a rhombus bisect the angles. So if the measure of angle 2 is 58, the measure of angle 3 must be equal or also 58. To find the measure of angle 4, notice we have a triangle here, and we know that this angle is 90 degrees, this angle is 58 degrees, so we can use the triangle angle sum theorem to find the measure of angle 4. We'll combine like terms, and the measure of angle 4 plus 148 will equal 180. Subtract 148 from both sides, and the measure of angle 4 equals 32. Pause the video and do you try number two. What are the measures of the numbered angles in rhombus PQRS? Let's start with the fact that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. So angle QPS will be congruent to angle SRQ. Since the diagonals of a rhombus bisect opposite angles, the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two and the measure of angle 3, and the measure of angle 4. We can use 
triangle QPR, since we know it is an isosceles triangle because all four sides of a rhombus are congruent. Using X for the value of angle 3's measure and angle 1's measure, we can write the equation 104 plus 2X equals 180. Subtract 104 from both sides and 2x equals 76. Divide both sides by 2, and x equals 38. Since x is the measure of angles 1 and 3, it is also the measures of angles 2 and 4. So the measure of angle 1, the measure of angle 2, the measure of angle 3, and the measure of angle 4 all equal 38. The diagonals of a rectangle also have a special property. If a parallelogram is a rectangle, then the diagonals are congruent. So, segment AC is congruent to segment BD. In example 3, we will find diagonal lengths. In rectangle RSBF, the length of segment SF is 2x plus 15, and the length of segment RB is 5x minus 12. What is the length of a diagonal? Since the diagonals are congruent, let's start with the equation the length of segment SF equals the length of segment RB. Now let's substitute 2x plus 15 in for the length of segment SF and 5x minus 12 in for the length of segment RB. We'll subtract 2x from both sides and add 12 to both sides. So 27 will equal 3x. Let's divide both sides by 3 and x equals 9. Now to find the length of each diagonal, we want to substitute 9 in for x in either diagonal's lengths. 2 times 9 is 18, and 18 plus 15 equals 33. So the length of each diagonal is 33. Remember it's a good idea to substitute 9 in for x for the length of segment RB as well, just to check to make sure we didn't make a math error. Pause the video and do you try number three. For part A, if the length of segment LN is 4x minus 7 and the length of segment MO is 2x plus 13, what are the lengths of the diagonals of rectangle LMNO? Since we know the lengths of the diagonals are equal, let's start with the equation. The length of segment LN equals the length of segment MO. Now we'll substitute 4x minus 7 and 2x plus 13 in for the lengths of segments LN and MO. Subtract 2x from each side and add 7 to both sides. So 2x equals 20. Divide both sides by 2 and x equals 10. Now don't forget to substitute 10 in for x in either of the lengths of the diagonals. So the length of segment LN is 40 minus 7 or 33. Again, don't forget to substitute 10 in for x in 2x plus 13 to check to make sure we didn't make any math mistakes. Part B asks, what type of triangle is triangle PMN? Since the lengths of the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent and the diagonals bisect each other in a parallelogram, we know that all four of these segments are congruent. Since triangle PMN has two sides that are congruent, it is an isosceles triangle. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have a problem with anything on the lesson check, be sure to ask me in class. Go ahead and try the challenge as well. Take another minute to reread the learning goal and the scale. See if you've climbed any higher on the scale since we began the lesson.